The feeling of regret is one of the worst emotions to experience, but is also one of the greatest motivators for future change. And under the lens of fashion, regret often manifests itself in the form of poor consumer decisions. Today, let's go through an updated version of my most regretful purchases that I've made over the last year and a half. Let me know some of your worst regrets down in the comment section. I want the comments to be a Fashion Holics Anonymous therapy section. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew. What to do? It's nice to meet you. Let's talk regrets. You are not paralyzed. You want to see what my life is? Don't, huh? don't, don't do it. Do you want to see what's going on here? Don't you stick that knife in your leg. Probably the biggest regret that I've had over the last year and a half has to be with the Doc Martin Adrian Tassel loafers. Now, I want to make it abundantly clear, I don't think Doc Martin as a whole makes poor footwear, but oh my goodness. The love and the attention that I gave the Doc Martin Adrian loafers, when I look back on it, I sort of regret it. I was totally caught up in this movement to elevate my footwear away from sneakers, which I guess the Adrian loafers did help me do. But what I just hated about the Adrian loafers is how much they hurt my damn feet. These things literally always hurt my feet. In my experience, I wore the Adrian loafers days and days on end, and the blisters only got worse and worse and worse. In fact, it got so bad during the summer of, I would say, 2021, that I would bring an extra pair of shoes, an extra pair of slides to wear just in case my feet started hurting too much wearing the Adrian loafers. It was that bad. Additionally, the sizing was never on point for my foot with the Adrian loafers, and I was giving my recommendations recommendation in those previous YouTube videos on a future that I hoped would come when it comes to comfort. Now, if you have docs and love them, keep rocking them. This is my personal regrets, but I feel like a lot of people probably feel similar to what, the way I do. For me, the docs just never broke in. They just never had the period of breaking like people said they would. I had people telling me to microwave them. I had people telling me to stick them out in the sun. I had people telling me to do all this crazy stuff to break in a pair of shoes when a lot of times with other shoes, you don't have to do all that. Alternative to Adrian loafers if you want to get into loafers that are around kind of the same price point you can find them at a good price point GH Bass & Co which their leather isn't perfect either I don't want to get it twisted their leather is not perfect at all but I found it more comfortable and then if you want to spend a little bit more money I'm finding a lot of love and a lot of enjoyment with Morhas. One final thing I do want to say about the Adrian loafers to leave it on a good note to leave it on a happy note is that I do think that the Adrian loafers like I said are very responsible for me elevating or beginning to kind of look at other forms of footwear other than sneakers and I think that stylistically they do look really good. Overall, I think that they add a really unique aesthetic, silhouette, proportional, all those fashion terminology words to an outfit that bring it together, that make it feel like a blend between like, okay, you like sneakers and now you're getting into loafers. Like this is a good entry level look for a loafer that has a platform that is very contemporary and fits with a lot of outfits that sneakers would also fit with. But comfort, as you'll see for this list, is paramount for usefulness in my opinion. Next regret that I have comes in the form of a fashion accessory that was really big last year. That fashion accessory is headphones, which is kind of weird to say, but it's true. Headphones as an accessory were pretty big. So for me, when it first came to having headphones as an accessory, I was a bit skeptical. But then as the idea presented itself in more unique and interesting ways, it started to spark a bit of curiosity on my end in terms of actually trying out headphones. I thought it was actually pretty genius to double something that is both functional for listening to music, listening to podcasts, as also a part of an aesthetic that you can also decorate your body with in tandem with the items of clothing that you're wearing. So for this idea of headphones as a trend, I would say the AirPod Maxes were the number one item, the most recognizable item within that current trend. Like I said, I like trying to find niche, more lesser known items. And for me, my headphone of choice were the Kef MU7 headphones. And there were some things I loved as well as some things that I truly 
hated. The loves include the design, the premium feel and nature of this product, and the fact that these are a relatively underrated headphone in the audiophile or headphones as accessory space. The hates include the weight, the sound quality, and the overall comfort. And there's that word again, comfort. These headphones are super heavy, especially comparing them to the Bose QC35s, which is another pair of headphones that I was kind of A-B testing at the time. They're also super expensive compared to the Bose, which didn't really add up to me in my opinion. We tested the sound quality of the Bose and the Kefs, and I even let Lauren test it out to see if my ears were just a bit off. And we both found that the sound difference or the sound quality difference was negligible between the two. And one has a very much higher price point, which is kind of disappointing. And if anything, for me, someone who likes rap music, hip hop music, the bass was actually better on the Bose than it was on the Kefs. Now, I still have the Kef headphones. Obviously, that's why you're seeing B-roll of it now. But I use the Bose QC35 2s. 10 out of 10 times. I definitely regret these and I was a bit disappointed by Kef. I know this is their first offering when it comes to over the ear headphones, but man, I had such high hopes. Another one of the more disappointing regrets that I have comes in the form of footwear and comes in the form of the R Legacy Camion boots, particularly with my decision to go with the Oxblood Red colorway. The R Legacy Camion boots, for me, are a great example of a pair of shoes that look amazingly beautiful when you just put them down on a table and you look at them. They are a shoe that feels great and is awesome in so many ways. I've come to find that they don't really fit into my wardrobe, which sucks because it means that I don't get as much wear and as much value as I probably should for a pair of boots that cost the price point that they do. Also, the fact that they are red makes them really hard to style. They are a very dressy boot. They are a very specialized boot. And I find myself only really wanting to wear them when there's a particular event that I'm going to that requires me to have something that's a bit unique and interesting when it comes to footwear. Also, with my current obsession with Japanese denim, I haven't tried it yet so i don't really know but it just doesn't seem right to pair my cuffed sugarcane japanese denim jeans with a pair of dress boots that look like 70s cowboy boots and the camion boots now i have no plan on selling the camion boots as like i said when i just look at them i'm like damn these are some beautiful beautiful boots and so i want to keep them in my wardrobe so that i can at some point hopefully integrate them into my wardrobe a bit better but with my current style journey I kind of regret the amount of just like love and attention and hype I gave this shoe for myself, who is someone that just doesn't, I don't get as much wear as I would hope to get out of the Camion boots. Maybe if I would have gone with black, I would wear them more because black is just a more wearable color. But right now my attention is just on other items of footwear and that's just how it goes sometimes. Things are cyclical. I guarantee I'll come back to the Camion boots at some point, but it's kind of a regret that, you know, for how much I spent on them, I don't wear them as much as I probably should. Another item of footwear that I regret buying are the Reebok Club C's Story MFG collaboration. It's basically the same story as the Camion boots. I mean, what type of dude has a pair of R Legacy Camion boots on one end and then has a pair of Story MFG Reebok Club C's? This dude. <laughs> Sometimes I like to experiment with footwear, but I learned that the Reebok Club C just isn't for me or just ain't for me for the rhyme's sake. I'm realizing more and more that I like what I like. I'm wearing a lot of New Balances these days and I've always worn a lot of New Balances. I'm wearing my Onitsuka Tiger Mexico 66s a lot when it comes to sneakers. I've always worn those sneakers. So I don't know. It's, it's important to kind of poke at different spots in your style and see where it can go and i did that with the club c's and ever since i did that they've been collecting dust but you know the good thing about the club c's is the collaboration with story mfg and this sneaker was actually the sneaker that put me on to learning about story mfg which has now become one of my absolute favorite brands ever in fact the club c is so unused the way in which i do use it is i take the insole out of the club c because it's a very like simple insole and whenever i have a pair of loafers or a pair of boots that don't fit me properly maybe they're a bit too big i take the insole from the club c i put it in that pair of shoes bada bing bada boom i'm i'm 
fitting in those shoes now because of the club c's insole that's what the club c has been delegated to in this current stage in its life cycle in my wardrobe another thing i would kind of weirdly say that i regret is that sometimes i feel like my style is trying to be so many different things at one time and i have a hard time kind of narrowing my focus and saying okay like i only like this one thing i don't know if you guys experience that as well but i just have so many different interests and sometimes it, it's like with the camion boots or like with the reebok club seeds i just want to enjoy or try a product out and see if it's worth it and as a result, like if you, you know, do that as someone who obviously is trying to develop personal style, you can spend, waste and use money and effectively rather than knowing exactly what you want and exactly the way you want it versus trying to try all these things at a different time. There are benefits to obviously experimenting and exploring like that's one of the most fun aspects of fashion. But there's also benefits to the flip side, which is having a uniform, knowing what you're going to wear and sticking to that kind of set path for multiple wears through months, through years, through decades. Last item I can say that I truly regret is this denim jacket by Needles. This jacket is the flimsiest, the thinnest, the most frail denim jacket that I've ever felt from a quote unquote nice brand the reason why i got it was the fact that it was on sale on essence i think it was about a year ago in 2022 yeah a year ago i see why it was on sale the quality is it just doesn't feel quality like when you hold a particular garment and there's a thickness to it or there's a material that just feels sublime it makes you feel like okay i understand why this costs what it costs but it's the exact opposite for this needles jacket and while it does have some cool aspects of design it has this very natural feel to it that i felt like my style was also kind of going in because I was getting more into Story MFG and I was like, this is a very organic, mushroomy, bouldery, Colorado-y feel. No, 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 no. When I put this jacket on, it just doesn't boost my confidence. Even the fit of it just doesn't boost how I feel when I'm wearing it. And as a result, um, even though it was on sale, I kind of regret purchasing it. And that's one of the things that sales sometimes can do to you is that you know, when you see something, a product that's on sale for 50% off, which I think this one was on sale for pretty good. It was under $100, so it was a pretty good deal. I think retail is over 200 so it was a pretty good deal. Sales can get you excited about something, but you have to remember, there are some products within sales that are on sale because they aren't the best product. And that can be the case sometimes. Sometimes you can grab a, a fine, you can like find a steal and the product is worth it, worth it. But for this, I just, I haven't really felt like it was the greatest decision. And I kind of regret that I made it all those days ago. That was weird. It was like a year ago. <laughs> I think for that, I, I need to sell it. I need to sell this jacket. I really need to sell it. It's over here, so I'm just looking at it, but I need to sell it. What are some of the items that you regret buying over the course of the last year or a year and a half? I'm so curious to hear about it. Go down in the comment section. It's the Fashion Holics Anonymous comment section in this video, and I want to see your comments on regrets that you have. As always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2023. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you from me. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful rest of your day. A bientôt. Peace. <laughs> what is good, Pose Vivid? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day today. Here's a fist bump for the one time. Bop. Here's two fist bumps for the one time. Bop. Thank you so much for staying to the end of the video. I want to ask you guys, how has your summer been so far? If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, let me know how your summer has been. For us in Colorado, it's been one of the weirdest summers ever. Ever. Like we've had more rain than any time in Colorado's history. I believe I saw that on the news or somewhere on Twitter more rain than any before. It's sunny today. Usually it's like super sunny in Colorado. That's why it's so beautiful. But like our rain has been just insane, like flooding, crazy hail, tornadoes. I know some people in the world don't get to it. It's been crazy. It's been crazy. It's been crazy. I'm glad that, you know, my family and mine, we were all safe and good. But, like, let me know how your summer has been. Hopefully, it's been good. Uh, I, I, you know, I want to hear, I want to know that, I want to know that my people in the PVV are doing well. So, tell me something good. If you have something bad to tell me, be real with me. You can be real with me, okay? So, whatever. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for staying to the end. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.